Like I said in the previous subchapter, when I was trying to explain uh, the causes and the risk factors in relation uh, to uh, in relation to cancer, we are going to first uh, 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 analyze these two major categories: the risk factors and the causes uh, fall within these two categories. And number one, we have genetics. And two, we have the environmental factors. But before we go there, before we go, uh, before we go deeper uh, into genetics and the environmental factors, let us first look at the genetic, genetic factors. Uh, please uh, follow critically and step by step. What we are going to see here is that at the end of it all, uh, when we finish looking at the genetic factors in relation to the molecular biology or the molecular basis of cancer, it's better that we first appreciate the genetic factors and the genetic causes. However, as we also look at the environmental factors, it doesn't mean that we are going to omit the, gene the genetic factors completely. Because uh, when you see the, gen the genetic, we have the gene, the genes. As you can see here, when you look at the genetic factors, this word genetic, we have the gene, the word gene. And now what we are going to do, it means even as we graduate to the environment, environmental factors, we are going to keep on also referring to the genes. And remember, back to this cell that, he, that, 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 that back to this illustration of the cell, uh, everything where, be, where everything starts from, you can see. I will keep on reminding you. I will keep on referring to this illustration that from the cell, when you look at this diploid cell, uh, where we have the 46 chromosomes uh, with that uh, that exist in pairs, therefore making it 23 pairs. I here I chose this chromosome that is in red at random, just I simply selected it. I had to magnify it to this structure. Now, within this structure, you can see that you have a supercoil DNA that, that I have already explained. Uh, then, I have on this chromosome, at this chromosome level, I had to pick one arm of the chromosome, which I had to magnify again. And after magnifying, you can, it gave us this uh, magnified structure or the amplified structure, which is our DNA structure. On our DNA, I say that we have uh, uh, regions called the Rosai or the Rokai, the Rochi or the Rokas, if it is one. In singular, it is one. So a Rokas uh, is, is a region that is occupied by a gene. And genes are regions on the DNA or now inheritance molecules that do what? That code for various proteins, proteins that form nails, proteins that form my hair, proteins that form the gene, there's a gene that, uh, that codes for the production of melanin, my dark, my dark skin pigment. There is, a, uh, there is the gene that codes for, for, my for some proteins that determine my behavior, the way I behave, the way I react emotionally, the way I react when I'm happy, when I'm, uh, when I'm pleased, the way I react when I'm stressed, the way I react when I'm going to defend myself in fright and fight responses, the way I reason, the way I think, the way I walk, all those are determined by the genes uh, that I inherited from my parents. Uh, so, my parents and the, the ancestors. So, all these, all, when you look at this DNA, we have various genes, various thousands of genes that determine uh, various characters, both the psychological, physical, emotional, behavioral, each and everything is actually housed, housed in the gene. Is, each and everything is housed that determines us, is housed that determines uh, that, 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 that each and everything, uh, 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 the genes, in other words, uh, uh, determine who we are, how we look, how we behave. So now, as we discuss cancer, both the, on the, the, as we discuss the causes and the risk factors of cancer, 
We are going to see that uh, as we look at each and everything, we are going to be referring to the genes. The genes. Either if the gene is mutated and changed, and if it was a normal gene that was doing normal functions for the body, and it mutates, it ends up becoming rebellious, becoming a rebel. And that one marks the beginning of cancer. Now, let us now go back. Let us now go back and we first appreciate at the genetic, uh, genetic factors. For someone to develop cancer, for any human being to develop cancer, whether a child, whether a, a young adult like me, whether an old person, uh, still, or it all still takes us back to the genetic factors. Whether genetics, whether this means that for someone to develop cancer, either he or she must be born with the mutated genes. For example, if I have mutated genes within my sperm cells, and I transfer my mutated genes within my sperm cells uh, uh, to the next offspring, and that offspring happens to inherit the, 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 the mutated genes, or the genes that have changed, they are, that are abnormal, it means he or she will be at risk of developing such a cancer. Uh, a certain type of, of, of a cancer depending on the gene that was mutated. I hope we are together. Like for example, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you for example, some disasters, some scenarios. Uh, uh, in, in 1945, uh, during the Second World War, uh, there was uh, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki regions of Japan were bombed uh, by uh, using the atomic bombs using those nuclear bombs. So what happened, you know how nuclear bombs are very deadly. Uh, they had to release a lot of radiations uh, in the environment within those regions. And people who did not die, who survived, most of them went ahead uh, to develop mutations within their genes. And the, most of them, of course, with the short trade, they started developing actually various types of cancers. Others who did not present with the cancers, uh, they had their, their, their genes, I mean their gametes. If they, for the females, they had their, their, their ovaries, uh, their, their, their ovaries, and the ova, their eggs uh, had to undergo mutations uh, at various structures within various genes they were affected. Then the males also had their sperm cells uh, with their DNA, of course, undergoing also gene mutations. So it meant that uh, the children whom they were producing, a good number of them went ahead to develop actually various uh, uh, abnormalities, including cancers resulting from the mutations that occurred from within their parents at the, at the gamete level or at the germ cell level. So likewise, uh, uh, genetics, if I, inherit, if I inherited the uh, uh, mutated genes from my parents, uh, it means uh, and those genes uh, uh, become amplified. And those genes that become amplified, it means I'm going to develop a cancer. That is, uh, that, that is uh, the, 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 the aspect number one of genetic, genetic inheritance. For example, there are families. There are various families all over the world from various races, from various tribes, from various ethnic groups. Remember I said that there's no ethnic group, there's no tribe, there's no race that is immune to cancer. As long as we are all human beings, as long as we are living human beings, we are all candidates of cancer. Therefore, if it so happens, for example, there are families, there are families, there are, there are families or family lines or lineages that are usually prone to developing some cancers. For example, breast cancer. Breast cancer tends to run in some families. We need to note that. Now, it means, you might ask yourself, that why is it that, why is it that, that family, why that family, why that family? You now need to, it is at this point, that I should let you know, that I should inform you, that we should share, that the breast cancer genes are inherited. It means such individuals who go ahead to develop breast cancer from certain families, it means they are born, it means their parents pass those genes, pass those mutated genes, abnormal genes to their offsprings in the form of uh, children who are born, both males and females, 
and you find the, and you after inheriting those abnormal genes that that allow breast cancer to develop so when they inherit them when they are in and they inherit those genes from their parents they end up of course at a certain age in life as they are growing they start developing they start they are diagnosed with the breast cancers like that like that so that explains the aspect of genetics now now look at this, look at the uh, uh, protein 53 or P53 gene. P53 gene, I say that, let us begin with, the, with the, this protein. I say that P53 gene is a tumor suppressor gene. I called it, I called it the guardian angel of most cells. It, this uh, P53 is a guardian angel of most cells. It is a, a tumor suppressor gene. It is a tumor suppressor gene or protein. So what does it do exactly? It means it regulates the cell, the, the division the growth, it means uh, by calling it a tumor suppressor gene, by calling it uh, the guardian angel uh, of, uh, of the cells, it means when the cells are undergoing cell cycle. Remember when I was explaining cell biology, we, we looked at the details in as far as the uh, cell cycle is concerned. So this uh, uh, illustration that I'm trying to use here is just a reminder. It is just a reminder. So you remember in the cell cycle, we looked at uh, the, the phases like uh, uh, the G1 phase or GAP phase 1 or growth phase 1. Uh, we looked at uh, the, the S phase uh, or the synthesis phase. We looked at the G2 phase. We looked at the M phase. Of course, there's another one which, uh, we, uh, which, which we should not focus on as well, the G0 phase or the G0 phase. You remember the G0 phase as well. So uh, when the cell is undergoing cell division, uh, I remember uh, I said that is uh, G, when you look at G1, the S phase, the G2 phase, the G0, they all fall under uh, what we call the interface. Interface is interface actually of cell division. Then in mitosis phase, you remember during in mitosis phase of the cell cycle, it's where uh, others like prophase, uh, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase fall. Now, when the cell is when the cell is undergoing cell division, uh, we say that it is undergoing actually uh, it is passing through the phases of the cell cycle. You remember very very well. And now, in order for this cell, in order for this cell to keep on undergoing cell division, we must have our protein 53 gene, OP53 gene, uh, being there to keep on allowing this cell to proceed to the next stage. That please, uh, for you now, I can see you, my dear blood, my dear cell. I, I can see that you have a damaged DNA. So I'm not allowing you to proceed to the next stage of the cell cycle because your DNA is not repaired. So first you stop here, I'm going to stop you from here to arrest you at this stage, Then you, so that you first work on this DNA that is, has been damaged. Because remember I said that the DNA that is not repaired, the moment a cell with the, a, a, a damaged DNA, the cell that it has, that is carrying a DNA that is not repaired, damaged DNA, that cell actually is a rebel. It means it is at risk of becoming cancerous. The moment it is allowed to proceed or to progress within the cell cycle. Now, our P53 will, will code for proteins or proteins or inhibitors or the stoppers that please, I'm stopping you, I'm first arresting you at this phase. First, you stop, work on your DNA, the moment you work on this DNA and the moment it's repaired, I'm going to allow you to keep on undergoing cell division. So like that, like that. And however, 
if the DNA, of course, when if the DNA is if that zero is stopped and arrested at that stage, and the DNA is worked on, repaired by those by the actions of those enzymes, they remember the exonucleases and the nucleases, those ones that keep on cutting off uh, the damaged segments of the DNA and rejoining adjoining them. Uh, the moment those enzymes uh, are able to to repair the DNA successfully, the cell again is around by our tumor suppressor gene here. Our our guardian angel of the cell, which is the P53 gene or the P53 protein. Then the cell resumes the cell cycle. In the event whereby this cell that is undergoing division, if in case its DNA fails to be repaired, in case DNA repair processes fail, now it means this gene, this protein 53, is going to help us to, uh, to, to force or to advise this cell to, under, to commit suicide uh, in a process which you call the uh, apoptosis, program the cell death. Apo, apoptosis, which is uh, also, which means uh, uh, committing suicide by the cell, uh, program the cell death. So in case DNA repair uh, processes happen to fail uh, at this cellular level, our P53 gene or the tumor suppressor protein or gene or the guardian angel will also activate other, other mechanisms that activate in the end apoptosis or program the cellular death or committing suicide or the, we see the cell committing suicide and the, the body gets rid of it instead of progressing and becomes cancerous. However, if it so happens that this gene, P53 that is found on the DNA, if it so happens that this gene was mutated or it, it was de destroyed or weakened, it means that the cell that has the DNA that is unrepaired will keep on replicating, laissez-faire, uh, free and non-stop, and eventually it will, become, it will end up uh, producing very many cancer cells uh, that keep on progressing and become a big tumor, the tumor that starts invading other regions of the body, other organs, other organ systems. With the time, uh, it become, of course, becomes the life of an organism who, who is a human being. So our P53 is the guardian angel. So if it so happens that it may be a human being, a young person, a newborn baby is born with the mutated P53 gene, or P53 genes. It means that human being, that child is going to develop cancers at an early stage. That is what it means. Then, like, look at me as an adult. If it so happens that again my P53 genes are mutated again or they are damaged by some environmental factors that we are yet to see, that we are, we are yet to know, still I will go ahead and develop, my body will go ahead and start developing cancers. So, I, I, an individual can inherit abnormal genes, abnormal P53 P50, P50, that, that was mutated, uh, can in, uh, also inherit, inherit uh, still damage the uh, P53, meaning that that individual develop cancer at an early stage. Then an adult like me, young adult like me, will also can also develop cancer if uh, I'm exposed to agents or chemicals that damage my P53 genes or proteins uh, at the DNA level. It means my cell, my my my, my cells. At any time, like the way you look at me, the, the way you look at yourself, uh, the way you look at ourselves, at any time as we are seated, as we are walking, as we are standing, at any point in time, the cancer cells are being formed within our body tissues, within our organs. But again, these processes keep on enabling them to, uh, to be phased out, to be phased out. Together with the, with the help of also immune systems, you remember, they will keep on phasing them out. But if it so happens that uh, all those processes are failing. If it so happens that in my, my, the processes within my body, within my body tissues, within the cell level are failing to, uh, to, to, to remove or to eliminate those uh, damaged cells through this process, through immune system cells, uh, eventually cancer develops.
I think we are, we are, we are, we are trying, I think we are in the same boat at this point. So, P53 is the, the guardian angel, it is the tumor suppressor gene, the tumor suppressor protein, so uh, that protects us against the cancer. So as we look at the environmental factors that we are here to know, we shall see how we shall see that they usually have an effect in damaging uh, in damaging our P53. It can be a medication. Even some drugs can inactivate P53, and we are already in trouble. Uh, chemicals like ionizing radiations can damage P53, and we are in trouble. We are put at risk of cancer. Um, uh, when it comes to uh, exposure to uh, ionizing radiations, like I said, I gave you an example of uh, the 1945 disaster, uh, atomic bombs, or nuclear bombs in Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan, you know what happened. So anything that damages, just damages. Some infections like viruses, for example, human papilloma virus, uh, the, the strains 16 and 18 damage P53. Within the cervical cells, the, the, the female cervix, the cervical cells, both the endo and the ectocervix, uh, some of those viruses produce proteins which inactivate the P53. And eventually they are put at risk of developing uh, cervical cancer or cervical carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, like that. Of course, the, the cancers exist in types you remember, uh, don't misquote me. So, um, at this point, allow me uh, to, 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 to summarize by saying that generally, we, we have, in the summary, we have tumor suppressor genes. It means they suppress tumors from developing. For example, if something is suppressing me, or if someone is suppressing me from rising, it means that one is controlling me. Are we together? Therefore, when we say tumor, so you know the meaning of a tumor at this point. So a tumor, tumor suppressor gene, it means the, these genes help us to keep on suppressing tumors so that they develop. As they try to develop the, the, the P53 together with the other colleagues, as we are going to see, they keep on suppressing cancer from developing from developing or from upcoming. Please don't come. You are not supposed to develop. You are not supposed to be to, to develop within this body. So hence they are guardian. So, so hence this makes it a guardian angel of the cells and the tissues and the general general the whole body. Now let's look at the another tumor suppressor gene, retinoblastoma. This is also a tumor this is also the guardian angel. Guardian angel of cells. They will have our guardian angels. Angel, they are from, of course, from the archangels and the angels. The category of the archangels. We have uh, angel Michael, angel Gabriel, angel Raphael. Those are the archangels. Then we also have other angels uh, in that in their respective category. So, uh, like uh, of course, uh, some of us are in our faith. Of course, we say uh, Saint Michael. Uh, we start reciting Saint the Return of the Saints. Saint Michael, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael, and the other and the other archangels and angels. Likewise, the guardian angel of the cells. They got the tumor suppressor genes. Now let's look at the, let's look at the retinoblastoma gene or the retinoblastoma protein. Of course, where are they found still? They are all found on the DNA. And if by existing on the DNA, as long as they are functional, they keep on coding or dictating for which protein, which suppressor protein to be produced to help the cell, to keep on regulating the cell as it is undergoing various series or various steps of cell division through the cell cycle that I have already indicated. So as the cell, in order for the cell to be, to go through the cell cycle successfully, we, uh, to have its DNA repaired, all these, uh, all these tumor suppressor genes like uh, P53, retinoblastoma genes, must be functional. They must be able to tightly regulate, to tightly mark that please, no, here, first stop here. 
Then here at this point, I, I have allowed you to resume the process of cell division. Here, please, for you, stop. First, be arrested here. For you, qualify to die by undergoing what you call apoptosis, the program, the cell death, or commit suicide by activating those death receptors or the ligands. You remember uh, the first ligand, the, the CD95 receptors uh, that trigger apoptosis. You remember we covered them when we are uh, discussing immunology, uh, how those cells, the, the immunological cells are able to eliminate the cancer cells and the viral infected cells. You remember, so retinoblastoma gene, the RBP, the retinoblastoma protein, is also another example of uh, a tumor suppressor gene, a tumor suppressor protein. Therefore, if our RBP is, is destroyed, if it is inactivated, maybe by some ionizing radiation, maybe by some chemicals, maybe by some infections that we are yet to know, eventually uh, the cell still, the cell undergoes, it, it now acquires a free environment that is being uh, without any regulation. Like the way in my mother language you said, Kira Jira Okichura. You are just going there, you just go back home at any time uh, you want, you leave home at any time you want without uh, any regulation from the parents, without any regulation from the guardians. You just said, I'm a free man, let's fail. You are there doing your own things, whatever you want. Likewise, the moment our BP is also damaged by any of the, the environmental factors that you are yet to know, you find that the cell is undergoing through cell cycle, unregulated, dysregulated, whether it has a DNA that is damaged and repaired, it keeps on undergoing non-stop, eventually cancer develops. I hope you are aware. I hope now you can see what exactly happens. So all this, as you can see, it is rotating around genetics. So anything, if this happens that a human being, a baby is born with the uh, mutated the retinoblastoma gene, it means uh, that child is at risk of developing any cancer, any type of cancer. Most, most of the cancers that develop, that manifest early in children, uh, will have the, the retino, retinoblastoma, is a tumor that begins from, uh, from the retinal tissue, the retina, which is the nervous tissue, part of the component of the nervous tissue from the eye. So, but of course, even other cancers develop. If, if it is an adult like me, a young adult, an old person, and he or she happens to be unlucky, and these this retinoblastoma genes are massively mutated, at the DNA level still, still this person will go ahead and develop cancer. So uh, there are what we call actually, when these proteins, when these tumor suppressor genes are functional, at the cellular level, at the cellular level during actually cellular division uh, through the cell cycles, they keep on, uh, for, the, when they, for example, when it is time for the cell to, to, to undergo cell division, these P53 and the retinoblastoma proteins, they are phosphorated. When they are phosphorated, they are inactivated. When they are inactivated, it means the cell will keep on growing. Again, when they are, de when they are deactivated, I mean, when they are deactivated, when they are activated again, they suppress the cell from growing. So they say, stop, the act as gates. The act as stop as gates. The act as stop as please Here, stop. I have already continue progress. Stop. Proceed. Stop. Continue. Stop. For some time like that. That is how they work. So now, at this point, we can proceed to Philadelphia chromosome. Philadelphia chromosome, um, now, at, when I reach here, I'm going now to take you back to the other terminologies that we looked at briefly. Now, when still under genetics, when we reach this Philadelphia chromosome, we're also going to see that some cancers uh, originate, of course, we develop some cancers, individuals develop, humans develop some cancers, like, for example, chronic myelogenous leukemia, CML, chronic myelogenous, CML, chronic myelogenous leukemia, which is a hematological malignancy, a hematological cancer, or cancer of blood. Uh, that originates from the myeloid series. The myeloid series, those are the white blood cells uh, that typically develop 
uh, the typical and pure developed from the bone marrow. I gave you examples like the neutrophils, eosinophils, oisinophils, uh, basophils, and others, and some, and some macrophages. Uh, so when, in, um, a, when a malignancy or when a tumor or when a blood cancer is developing from the bone marrow originating cells or, or the cells that are purely groomed, developed and groomed by, from the bone marrow in hair before they can start uh, functioning within saturation uh, and in tissues, um, when such a cell is, the, when such a cancer is developing from there, starting from those, one of those lineages, it is referred to as mild leukemia. You know the lymphocytes, for the T lymphocytes, you know what happens. The, the precursors originate from the bone marrow, but again the, the grooming, the development and the grooming takes place from various organs. Even the most B lymphocytes we know, we are aware. That's why they are not myoid series. For them, they are lymphoid or lymphoblastic series. So, for example, chronic myeloid leukemia or chronic myelogenous leukemia, CML, uh, develops as a result of uh, inheritance of what we call the Philadelphia chromosome. When a baby or when a child inherits such a chromosome or such, such a chromosome with the, an abnormal gene, that is coding for what we call tyrosine kinase activity that, uh, that keeps on promoting cell growth and development, cell division. It means such an individual uh, ends up developing uh, chronic myelogenous leukemia. So what is this Philadelphia chromosome? Now, this takes us back to our terminologies here. We have oncogenes and proto-oncogenes. Now, let me throw more light once again on oncogenes and proto-oncogenes. Under genetics, we can inherit, we can, I can be born, I might be standing here, maybe when I was born with some oncogenes, when I, maybe when I inherited some oncogenes from my parents or and other ancestors. I don't know at this point. No, so what does an oncogene mean? An onco, you remember the study of cancers, the study of tumors, both benign and malignant tumors, that is called oncology. I will explain the oncology, the meaning of oncology. Oncos refers to a tumor, a swelling. In a Greek, in a Greek language, oncos refers to a tumor or swelling. So, you know how benign tumors and uh, malignant tumors or cancers. Now here we have oncogenes. Onco, it means the tumor. Onco, it means the tumor, then the genes. So these are genes that directly promote the development of cancers, that promote the, 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 the that directly promote the normal growth, that directly, these are the, the oncogenes, are proteins, Oh, that are found, of course, that are coded by, our, by these oncogenes on our DNA. Abnormal genes, in other words, which promote or transform uh, the normal body cells uh, to be from the normal, from the normal cell, from the normal, or from, from the normal to the abnormal. It means they trans, the oncogenes trigger, they, they coerce, they induce uh, the development of cancer uh, by doing what? by transforming the normal body cells uh, from the normal state to the rebel, to the rebellious state or the abnormal state. And that is how cancer begins. Now, we are going to see that oncogenes, the moment oncogenes, the moment we inherit oncogenes, it means uh, as long as they are sufficient, it means we end up developing cancers. And now, as we discuss the oncogenes, we are going to, this will take us to what we call the Philadelphia chromosome. Now, let me throw more light on what we call Philadelphia chromosome. Let me, allow me to create a space, allow me to create a space uh, for all of us to understand. So, allow me to uh, erase this illustration of the cell cycle. Because we already know it, we, know, we already know what it means, even from our knowledge of cell biology. So, uh, when you look at the, uh, 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 the Philadelphia chromosome, uh, this one, how does it come about? We have what we call, uh, 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 we have uh, chromosomes. The chromosomes, uh, I need to remind you that uh, 
My dear colleagues, at this point I need to remind you that chromosomes, the way they are arranged in zeros, in those pairs, they are given numbers from chromosome 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Then the twenty-third pair is the sex chromosome. If it is Y, it means that that individual is a male. If it is uh, X, it means that individual or that human being is a female. So the twenty-third pair, you know, it is the sex chromosome. Now we go. Now they, they remember. Remember the, the first twenty-two are called what? The autosomes. Those are the ones which code for all the proteins that determine our, my, my, my outlook, my, my behavior, each and everything about me. So, the, the autosomes. Now, now back to our, back to our, our, our Philadelphia chromosome. Like I've said, they have, the pairs have numbers. Now, we have what we call uh, chromosome 9. We have... Uh, Chromosome, we have chromosomes 9 and 22. So what happens is, in order for chromosome, for Philadro this abnormal chromosome to develop, the Philadelphia chromosome, this Philadelphia chromosome, which was given the name uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, because it was the first discovered by the uh, by the scientists who are who are studying who are studying cancer, the oncologists who are studying cancer in a region of the United States in a place called the Philadelphia. I, is it Philadelphia? I don't know whether it is a state of the United States or whether it is a, it is the capital of one of the states of the U.S. But it was discovered in a place called the, uh, Philadelphia in the United States. In 19, I think the year was 1960 or 1961. We shall go back and uh, find, more about, about, find more about that history. So Philadelphia chromosome uh, results from uh, reciprocal translocation, reciprocal translocation, Reciprocal translocation or translocation of a certain of of a certain region of the chromosome between uh, chromosome 9 and 22. So there's an exchange. Uh, there's no exchange, actually. One, the chromosome 9 uh, loses, uh, uh, chromosome 9 usually uh, loses a certain point, a certain component. Like the way, the way this arm can break off, this is what happens. Let me say, uh, let me say that this is our chromosome, our chromosome 9. Look critically, uh, observe critically. So let me say that this is our chromosome 9, this X-shaped structure. And now here we are going to have our chromosome 22. Let me uh, indicate it in red. Now, during the third division, we are going to see uh, this blue component. Let me encircle this one. A portion of the arm of chromosome 9, this portion of the arm of chromosome 9 is going to break off during the phases of zero cycle, during the cell growth. And it is going to attach itself. It is going to break. For example, the way part, the way we can knock our heads, maybe, and the part of my hair from my scalp goes onto your forehead or onto your head again. Maybe we knock our heads, and maybe if my hair strands happen to be weak, they detach. After detaching, they end up on your head, on your forehead. 
Like for example, uh, uh, eventually, if, for example, I happen to be having gray hair, and the part of my, some of my gray hair remain on your head, on your scalp. So that is what happens. That is that explains the reciprocal translocation of a certain uh, break point, and, and it attaches itself onto this chromosome 22. Now, you can see what is happening. This portion, this blue portion that I have encircled with the red dots in this circle is going to break off and is going to end up where attaching on this arm of chromosome 22. And after this attachment, uh, we are going to end up with now the Philadelphia chromosome. And the Philadelphia chromosome is going to develop, as it develops, we are going to, to see it carrying what we call the tyrosine kinase activity. Tyrosine kinase activity.